for a millennium, mankind has wondered, what is the best video game ever made? I, Thomas McNamee, have decided to find out. This is the crusade for the best video game ever made. Guess who's back? Back again. Tell a friend. I'm back again. Today we're going to be reviewing Wolfenstein 3D. I am mainly reviewing this because a friend of mine insisted upon it. You're welcome, White House! Wolfenstein 3D is often considered one of the first first-person shooter games. So let's go ahead and see how archaic it is and see if it holds up today. Wolfenstein 3D is a 3D game, as the title suggests. Also, it was released in 1992. When you mix 1992 with 3D, you often get primitive graphics technology. Now, a lot of people would probably think that the game is shitty looking because it's old, but I think the graphics look very quaint. They're charming in that way. I don't know, maybe I just like all bad graphics. Except for F-Zero's, that game's a piece of shit. The music is pretty standard to me. It doesn't really impress me much. It it basically just sounds like old 90s PC game music. Early 90s that is. I have playing right now in the background some music from Wolfenstein 3D. You can tell me if you think it's good or not. It really doesn't impress me at all. It's not memorable to me. The story goes as follows. You are BJ Blaskowitz, and you were looking for some top secret Nazi plans, and you got captured. So now you need to escape, and that's about how it begins, I guess. The story is not integrated really well at all in the game. Pretty much, as you want to know the story, you just pick up the back of the box and you read it. Basically, this is kind of like Mario when it comes to stories. It's there, but it, it's not really there. The gameplay here is just some good, dumb old fun. You go around each level looking for the exit, all while you shoot a bunch of Nazis and you occasionally look for treasures to get a higher score. There are 10 levels in each episode, and at the end of each episode, on the 10th level, is a boss. These bosses are quite enjoyable, especially when you get to fight Hitler in an Iron Man suit. That one's real neat. Now, these levels are really maze-like. So if you want to prevent frustration, I advise you get a map, or if you just like exploring rooms that don't really look that different from each other because of primitive graphics technology, you can go mapless. I should mention you can't look up or down, you can only look left and right. This is once again because the technology is very primitive. All in all, don't expect anything sophisticated. This is pretty brainless fun. Yep, I enjoyed it. This game is really just some dumb old fun, as I've said before. And I feel like, for dumb old fun, it deserves a 4 out of 5. I also like how archaic it feels. It really is a blast from the past. And that really gives it some charm to me. On the top games list, I'm going to have to put it at number 4, just after Super Mario World. It's not particularly memorable, but it's fun. Next episode, I will be reviewing Verdun. Will I get shell shock? Find out on the next episode of The Crusade for the Best Video Game Ever Made.